Unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. Kenya's President William Ruto is the biggest conman in the history of politics in Africa and in Kenya. You know, the previous president, he came from money. He was a rich person, you know. He didn't try to hide the fact that he liked good things in life. He didn't hide the fact that he couldn't relate with poor people. He couldn't hide the fact that he was money. Money was everywhere. Okay, we understand. Now, President Ruto, when he came to power, he found a narrative. He said, I went to school poor. I went to school barefoot. I began selling chicken. That's how I made my money. I'm just like you. I'm actually just like you. And people were so bamboozled by this fake honesty and humility by this politician. And they bought it up. And now they're seeing the true colors of the man. That he is a bloody, hungry, greedy politician that will stop at nothing to use public resources to have a taste of the good life. And the problem is he's put people like him in office. Because please tell me why the president is wearing a belt worth thousands of dollars changing watches that cost in excess of six five figures in dollars tell me why he has designer watch collections yet the salary of the president is known is ten thousand dollars in kenya yet the whole country is languishing in poverty where's this money actually coming from and is this why you wanted to be president you and your cronies Hello there, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of Our Conversations. My name is Andira Ganga. I'm a business journalist by profession and a digital content creator. I love coming on here and having conversation with you guys about black people, Africans, our empowerment and how we can rise up and, you know, take our rightful place at the global stage. You can connect with me on social media at Andira Ganga across all platforms. I want us to get to today's video because, and it's not going to be long, I'm going to keep it short and sweet because this is something that is really bothering me. President Ruto and his administration are making a mockery out of Kenyans because everybody right now is crying about how tough the economy has actually been. But guess what these boys from Rift Valley are doing? They're wearing designer clothes left, right and center. Let's start with the most recent one that caused controversy in Kenya because the president was attending um, an event and guess what? He was wearing a watch that is worth $40,000. He's been president, presidents in Kenya and $10,000, yeah? He's been president for a year. Let's do the math, okay, maybe he can afford it, right? Please tell me why last year he was again in a watch that is six million Kenyan shillings, again, about 43, 45 million. Please tell me why Last year, he was wearing a belt that was worth about 420,000 Kenyan shillings. That is about 30 something thousand dollars or give or take. Please tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why. I'm trying to find the name of that belt. Yeah. And he was in church, actually. This is the most annoying part that he can wear such an expensive belt for daily errands. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not that important. Yes, he was wearing a belt. I'm trying to look for the name of the belt because here they've just indicated the price. The price of the belt was $28,000, right? This ones are not stating the name of the belt. I'm I want to get the name of that belt because people are actually playing with Kenyans. How, how, do, you, how do you do this to your people? How, how, <laughs> how do you do this to your people? It's an Italian, it's a gold buckle Italian belt. I'm just trying to get the right name because I don't want to butcher the designer. Because me, I, I, I cannot even afford it. Yeah, it's called a Stefano Ricci belt. Why? Why is he wearing Bulgari? And it doesn't stop with him. Members of his cabinet, huh? They got into power. Murkomen, who's always reminding people of how he went to school when he was so poor. He went to school barefoot. 
He's now wearing shoes worth 130,000. He's now wearing shoes worth 96,000 Kenyan shillings. He's wearing shoes worth $1,000 and above. You cannot convince me that they're rich and they're looking for alternative ways of spending their money. Rich people buy yachts. Is this people that have gotten new exposure to money, looting it, having no single idea of what to do with that money and splurging it. And this is where my problem with African politicians come in. All of them, they read from the same script. You loot your money, you're going to buy Italian designer. Who do you think you're helping? You're helping the Italian um, um, economy. You loot money, you go buy German machine. Who do you think you're helping? You're helping the Germans. And then the IMF will want back their money and guess what will happen? People will get taxed more. This president is the biggest joke in the history of Kenya. But then again, Kenyans deserve it because they elected a monkey. So enjoy the circus. But some of these things, we just can't let them slide because it's just, it, it, it lacks empathy. It genuinely lacks empathy. Do you remember during COVID when President Trump just refused to empathize with people during George Floyd when he refused to empathize with people? And I'm not comparing the same scenarios. I'm just saying sometimes there couldn't be much that a leader can do because this situation can be a little bit tricky. Because if you look at Kenya, there's very little that can be done right now to turn around the economy outside of stopping to steal, streamlining the system, which are things that take time because the system has been broken down for nearly 10 years. But a little bit of empathy goes a wrong way. But what are these people doing? The president and his cocoon of Kalenjin boys who he's put in the, in the, in the ministries, they, they walk around with cash. They walk around with so much money, organizing football tournaments, giving out that money, yet people are dying at the National Hospital because there they aren't enough doctors. There are 4,000, over 4,000 unemployed doctors who take seven years to train, who it costs so much money, so many unemployed nurses. The man is always on the presidential jet from one country to another with a begging bowl, begging and begging and begging, then comes and bamboozles the people and tells them, I'm looking for jobs abroad. Which jobs? Will you keep quiet? Which jobs? Which jobs? Every other part of the world is grappling with high unemployment right now because the business environment is really tough. And while you're coming to light them on their faces, you're wearing Bulgari. He's wearing Bulgari while coming to light to somebody who's not eaten the whole day. He's wearing a belt. He's wearing a Stefano Ricci belt to go to church so that he can attack his political opponents and talk about how amazing his administration is and how godly he is. Okay, let's, let's, let's break that down. What did Jesus have? What material things did Jesus have? Did Jesus have Gucci? Anyway, in the Bible, does it say Jesus had gold? He lived a very humble life, a life of service. But this man who's the appointed deputy Jesus in the country is donned in counter suit in nice jewelry. I pity Kenyans, by the way. I feel so bad for Kenyans. And as a Kenyan, I say I pity Kenyans because I've gotten to a place where I don't want to accept that that is my reality. But then again, you put a monkey in office, enjoy the circus. The problem is this circus is five years long. Five years long. Imagine if this guy is in under a year, they're buying designer stuff at this level. Imagine the damage they do to the treasury by the time they're leaving office. These guys came into power. They said they found the coffers empty, yet they had big budgets of replacing curtains. Curtains! They said they found no money, but they had big budgets of replacing cars. The other administration had cars, they left cars. But these guys said, we want new cars. And I think that should have been the waking, the wake up bell. That these people are greedy, they're power hungry, they're very materialistic, and they are village boys who've gotten exposed to a little bit of money and power. And they are looking to suit that bruised ego. This is the thing with poverty. I grew up in poverty, so I'll tell you this. It follows you everywhere. Poverty has this stench. You cannot wash it off. Where Sauvage Dior, where... Tom Ford, where whatever. If you're a poor person, if you came from poverty, where whatever it is that you want, I see you, I see poverty. And that's exactly what they're trying to run away from. But then again, what they don't understand is even their children, they could be born in rich families, but we will still know your parents, they have some DNA of poverty in them. It takes so many generations 
to get acclimatized to wealth. That's why right now people are doing money aesthetic. Because if you look at those pictures, that jewelry is just sitting on the hand of that man. It's all blending. Like, it's not. It's, it's not. It will take like three to four generations for the money to sit. But then again, there will be no money for those generations. You know why? Because they're spending like lunatics who have no common sense. I am so tired, so, so tired of greedy and materialistic people seeking office, getting office in the name of service, and then going to build Italian economies by buying luxury goods. Go work at Wall Street. They'll pay you enough money, and then you can buy whatever it is that you want. Go work at JP Morgan. Go work at an NGO. Why do you have to allow people to fund your expensive lifestyle with money that should be used to buy medication? A big shame on the president. A really big shame on the president because... And you know what the funny thing is? I don't care. I don't care how many Bulgari watches he buys and how much he tries to affiliate himself with wealth and affluence when he goes outside. He's a president to Africa, an African country, which is a dark place, mad with disease, poverty, and all that. And until the day that the whole continent changes and the country changes, it doesn't matter what you drive. That's why when they went to the US Africa Summit, do you know what happened to them? They were put in buses because that's where you belong in poverty like the rest of the continent and until you start doing right by your people nobody's going to respect you it doesn't matter what you wear in fact those guys when you go to buy from them they laugh at you in the changing rooms in the rooms where they go to get those goods for you they laugh at you because those products are not made for you but here you are walking your dark skin in there your dark kenyan kalenjin skin rift valley skin in there to buy designer with taxpayers money such a shame this video sometimes frustrates me so much. But then again, this is a very important conversation that we must have. Even if it's just one person, these leaders have to know that the, the future of the continent is at stake. And you either choose Gucci or you choose healthcare. And you know the funny thing I'm about to end this video is you can perambulate all you want. But if your systems, if you don't build up systems, even your Gucci will not save you in times of need. During COVID, we saw so many African politicians die. You know why? They were used to this lifestyle where you amass as much wealth as you can. You go to Germany, you go to the US for treatment. COVID came, all borders were shut. Now you're stuck with the system that you refuse to build. Guess what? You will die like all the other people that have been dying in your country. You will go for an ambulance. It will not come. You will die at home like a rat. Just like your people have been. You know why? Because instead of prioritizing a functional healthcare system, you chose a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and a visa. You will die like a rat. Thank you for watching this video. Comment down below what you think. What do the politicians in your country do? Do they have common sense? Or are they as senseless as the Kenyan president? I'll see you again next time.